Are you interested in knowing what your true health and wellness levels are? Glenn Streeter from Boulder, Colorado is one of those polymath type individuals who have an exceptional grasp of not only how to heal the body, but of how it relates and integrates with our mind as well as all of existence. Glenn has a remarkable wealth of knowledge on everything to do with cutting edge technologies, assisting with peak performance and optimal wellness. While focusing mostly on athletes, he also helps the many who have been failed or abandoned by the Western medical system. In this interview, he takes me through an overall health assessment with technologies you probably didn't even know existed, all the while providing a plethora of health tips you've probably never heard of. Check it out. I promise you'll learn something valuable. So the first test that we're going to perform is called heart rate variability. HRV has been around for many decades as a specialized EKG technology, but instead of measuring a heartbeat like EKG, it measures what happens between the heartbeats. The reason that that's important is that during that refractory period, the heart is resting and we can look at the person's physiology from a base level and determine whether they're predominantly going oh, or whether their physiology is going ah, right? So if our base physiology is screaming all the time, we're using up vital energy through the adrenal glands and the thyroid um, and we're moving out of normal cellular metabolism and this is the recipe for disease. So obviously we want to be as close to home as possible in our base physiology so that normal cellular metabolism is utilizing processes in the Krebs cycle efficiently and we're not having to dip in to the adrenal glands in order to function during the day. Um, so this is priceless for anyone to find out, not just athletes but um, lay people as well, to find out where they are. But for athletes in particular, each time that we do the HRV, it determines whether we need to rest. Um, we call it a yellow light day, red light day, or green light day. So whether it's a light, heavy, or medium day as far as training. And then for folks who are battling pathologies, we can actually test with the HRV, take the supplement, or introduce the energy medicine device or acupuncture, or whatever therapy is being used at the time, do a test post and determine the efficacy of that test. So we can completely eliminate theory, postulizing, hypothesis, and guessing and we can actually use data to make our decisions rather than um, opinion. So we're going to test Scott now, and then we'll uh, show the results when we're done. So here's Scott's HRV reading after a few minute test which involves uh, laying down for a portion of the test and then standing. So this graph represents the overall wellness. This axis represents uh, nervous system. And then this axis represents organ function. Blue is world-class athlete and red is imminent heart attack. So right now Scott's at 10-4, which is in the safe zone. But here's adrenal function. 0.53 to 0.69 is ideal, so you can see that your adrenals are a little bit stressed out. Yeah, that's actually normal for me. Uh, another thing to look at is the thickness and the depth in the blue here. You're actually pretty good. You can actually see it looks like the Rocky Mountains, whereas some folks look like uh, the Midwest without a lot of activity in there. Okay. Resting heart rate, 67 laying down, 72 standing. Those are all world-class numbers. Uh, this is the autonomic nervous system. SNS is sympathetic, and then this line is parasympathetic. So this is the brakes, and this is the gas pedal. This is the regeneration zone over here, and this is the degeneration zone. So Scott is a minus two right now laying down, and then does not change when he stands up. So we need to take um, a deeper look into that. Hmm. Okay, conclusion. The functioning of organ systems is moderately reduced while the nervous system is slightly reduced. 
Then we can look at the 3D spectrum and actually see the changes. So the front line is laying down, and then you can see where you stand up in the back. You can see the adrenal response right here, which is good to have that because many people are completely flat on this graph as well. But we'd like to see this response be higher. So more variable, yeah. Right. So um, just from what we see here, I'm guessing that you have some adrenal and some thyroid issues that could be just from overwork or overtraining. But I don't see anything um, that's uh, clinical or seriously pathological yet. But maybe we'll find that on the new vision, which is our next test. Okay. Looking at uh, the New Vision device, New Vision is an artificial intelligence holographic testing protocol that utilizes 17 servers around the world and takes the person's information as a data point and throws 130,000 items at that person. Whatever sticks, it ends up prioritized on this device with 95% accuracy. So, for example, we can look at allergies and sensitivities. So, the colors denote intensity. You can see um, purple means acute and intense, whereas yellow means chronic and less intense. Here's another great thing about this product. We can click right on it, and it takes us right to Wikipedia or to the web. Oh, interesting. Wow. So this one is eyes and upper airway. And we can dig deeper and we usually encourage the patient to do that. Okay, now we get into the clear here, clear circles. These are a lot less intense. So we're looking for patterns. We don't want to get lost in all the details. And it, how often does this change? Like you say you were going to do, this was what, six months ago? Or well, no, this is today. Oh. Because we just brought you up. Oh, okay. We can go back and compare to six months ago. Yeah, but how often do you recognize that it changes drastically, or that? Um, well, there are certain things that are transitory, like uh, sinus congestion or sore throat, but there are other things that are not, like um, if someone's on a trajectory for, um, let's say, uh, liver cancer, that's not going to change right. very quickly. Okay. Or Lyme disease, right? All we can do is, because if you have Lyme, it may show up on New Vision until the day that you're dead, but if, as long as we can keep symptoms suppressed, then we're doing our job. You're not necessarily going to eradicate, quote unquote, many of these problems. But if you're asymptomatic, then who cares? Okay, so th the reason that dental, we bring that up early, is it's so important is that each tooth is actually a fuse in a photosynthesis or a fiber optic fuse box for a meridian system. For example, tooth number 11, eye, knee, hip, mid-back, gallbladder. So if we're having any trouble in any of those areas, we need to rule out uh, root canal tooth infection first, right? So again, we want to look for patterns. So I can see sinus, sinus, jaw, knee, right? So 15 and 14. So if you're having any challenges in those areas, we may need to look at the tooth first. And how do you know if it's the tooth is the cause or the area that it represents is causing it? That's, that's an excellent question. Um, it may not be the tooth. But um, as long as, as we continue to see the patterns, we, yeah. we may have to come back to the tooth. That's why we come here first. But it's, in a sense, bidirectional in that what affects the tooth, the tooth also affects that area? Yeah, for example, let's say someone had a surgery uh, through a gallbladder meridian on the IT band. That's yeah. going to compromise the energetic flow to the gallbladder, even though the gallbladder itself might be whole and healthy. Okay. Right? Yeah. So we need to address the, that incision before we bother with the tooth. But keep this in mind, 95% um, of cancer patients have three or more root canals that are infected. Wow. So they pull the teeth, the cancer goes away in many, many cases. Interesting. So it's that critical. Okay, let's look at uh, 
traditional Chinese medicine. So this is going to show us what the meridian flow looks like in your body. So here we have internal nose point, which goes along with some of the sinus things that we've been seeing with the teeth. So if you were to spray the uh, nanoxide in there five or six times a day, that would be an excellent start. Okay. To have the silver begin to coat that m massive surface area that we have in the sinus. Okay, again, pattern recognition is what we're after. We're not getting lost in the details. So you can see abdomen, bladder, kidney, bladder, bladder. Kidney, governing vessel. Okay, let's look at spine. So you can see the value of the device for any medical professional wanting to narrow down their parameters of testing. Right. Okay, so mid-back comes up for you, just like we saw with the teeth, right? T9, T10, T11. Yeah. And then jaw. Um, but everything is clear other than the top one, so... And are all those, even the ones that are clear, are they listed in order of yeah, severity? It, 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 it's in order of severity. And again, this isn't a replacement for proper imaging. Mm -hmm. what, what it is, is a precursor so that our imaging choices are as uh, refined and logical as possible. Right. And have you done testing for the new vision up against like thermography and other testing uh, to see how, how they correlate? When the blood work has been done with new vision in the beta testing, there was definitely um, corroborating evidence. Okay. Also, thermal imaging does do that, as well as GDV. Um, and what is GDV? That's uh, gas discharge visualization, Kirlian photography. Oh, that's Kirlian, okay. Okay, so in terms of uh, intensities, here's brown, which means chronic and intense, and then yellow, which is chronic and less intense. Overall, your uh, nutrition looks pretty good here. Okay, see this? Heavy metal detox. Mm. Okay. And we'll find out what that is as we go. In particular, what the heavy metal is, because certain metals need certain chelators to work properly. Bentonite clay, recommending. MSM. Let's look at pathogens and toxins. Ah, there it is. Cadmium. You have cadmium poisoning. Hmm. His Ascaris, this is a worm. Let's see what this virus is. Do you recommend uh, turpentine for that? Or? Turpentine is uh, safe and has a long track record. It was actually in the Merck manual up until 1910. Oh, well. The person to research for that is on YouTube, Dr. Jennifer Daniels. And the place to get it is diamondgforestproducts.com. No, I've been on it for a couple of years now. And that takes care of most parasites? It uh, is definitely one of the top candida solutions. Solution. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting. I would, if this were me, I would definitely be on the nanoxide product to deal with this virus. Hmm. And then we need to get you on a chelator for the cadmium. We just, we're so poisoned from so many different angles that what I recommend is that people, even if they're healthy, just think about every day, what type of detox am I doing? Am I on a chelator? Am I on some type of natural antibiotic every day? Oregano, all of these things are very safe. And what I like to do is just tell people to continue to cycle so that we're knocking down that pathological load, knocking down that pesticide and heavy metal load, right? rather than waiting for the train to crash and having to fix everything once right. it's too far gone. Okay, this is called energetic cellular release. This is what your body is attempting to detox first. Hmm, looks like you might have picked up an infection from a dog. Oh, it's a treatment for canine heartworm. Oh. Interesting. Did your dog have heartworm? Uh, dog I had when I was a teenager. And I, I remember getting it on me, <laughs> really, trying to get it in her mouth, and yeah, she wouldn't um, swallow it. Can you believe that? How long ago was that? That's a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> Can you it's, believe that this device picked picks that, that up? up? Wow, interesting. So yeah, that's still poisoning you. Mm. Um, and you can see the cadmium again. So once again, pattern recognition. The only reason that anything is on this device is that it, your body is either screaming for it or it's screaming at it. Mm. Is it unusual to have it come up twice in the no, same? No, that, that just shows that it's intense, right? Oh. Here's the cadmium, right? 
It's yeah. the third time we've seen it because it's the first on this page, for example. Oh, yeah. Right? So we have to honor that. So people who are cautious, I say, go ahead, if you want, go ahead and have a cadmium test. But if you're smart, you'll not spend the time and money and you'll Just spend that money on getting the cadmium out of your body because it's there. Okay, vestibular system, this is your balance from the head trauma. Hmm. So I would recommend um, light therapy and PEMF continually for the head. Have you ever used the, the light therapy that uses like a, it, you clip it in your nose and it's using the uh -huh. light pole? Now, what do you think of that? Um, I, I think it's got huge value. The fact that most of the blood from the body comes through that area um, allows you to treat globally, even though you're treating locally. There it is again. Wow. Wow. Three times. Yeah. Now this is the Hannah Kroger's uh, synopsis page, or summary page. And Hannah Kroger was a... Uh, she's yeah. passed away. Oh, but she? Hannah created a database, one of the first in the West, of herbology, homeopathy, uh, Eastern methods. Okay. See, it's recommending glutathione, right? Mm -hmm. The master antioxidant, but also a tremendous chelator. Now, is it, it looks like there's quite a few things. Is it uh, normal or to have such a Well, list? there's 130,000 that are summarized down mm -hmm. into what we see here. Wow. So, again, we don't want to get lost in the details, but we do want to look at the patterns. Okay, here's another summary page. And this should be available in a smartphone app within the next year or so. So you can imagine... Um, the accessibility would be... Oh, look at that. You have a uh, stomach ulcer. Huh. H. pylori. Sodium again. Okay. Now, along with cadmium, we had lead toxicity. You see that? Yeah. So as you bring this into a, a phone app, then uh, people will test themselves? Or... Mm-hmm. And I think another question people have is, how is this device picking up on me specifically and not you right now? Well, because uh, there's a triangulation created with your name, place of birth, and date of birth. Oh, I see. It's unique to you. Okay. So, for example, we have clients all over the world. Um, we were able to figure out that a gentleman in Ecuador was poisoned, and we were able to figure out what the poison was and do that over the telephone. Wow. Um, that happens quite often. So it's all about using the power of the hologram and artificial intelligence for, for good rather than messing with us for a change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's thyroid. Here's total lipids again, right? Uh-huh. So we definitely want to take a look at your fat intake. Are you doing coconut oil daily? Yeah, um, but maybe not enough. Huh? Um, and also the best source of fats is algae. So maybe we want to change your uh, brand of algae. Okay. Hmm. Okay. You're on track for uh, kidney stones. Purine? Yeah. So you're, you're too acidic. Hmm. And part of that comes from the electrolyte imbalance, right? Yeah. As we as our electrolytes increase and become proper, then we become alkalized. So the pH yeah. is actually changed by the uh, presence of the metals. Interesting. Okay, there's kidney. Now again, it's in yellow and it's small. So think of this as a GPS for your body. What it's telling me is that your boat is headed for the rocks. It's not there yet, but... What it allows us to do is make a few degrees course correction to get your boat into smooth water rather than the Western system waiting for your boat to crash on the rocks and then coming in and picking up the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not do that. <laughs> okay. There's some scar tissue from a surgery. Um, where would that have been? The most recent was uh, on my lip from a mountain bike accident. Okay. So there might still be a low-grade infection in there. Okay, see the lead and the cadmium are affecting your thyroid function. That's what it is, huh? Okay. Um, and then the fifth one down, um, the EFAs. We really need to uh, take a hard look at getting your fats squared away because the fats actually are the most important macronutrient. Yeah, right. Because, because they create hormones, right? They, it's how we make testosterone, progesterone, it, estrogen. It seems like a lot of these guys are talking about um, how important it is to start getting the body more into right? ketosis. In ketosis. Yeah, but if you'd listen to Ray Pete, R A Y P E A T dot com, mm -hmm. um, who's 80 years old now, he's a brilliant biochemist, he doesn't feel like it's uh, safe to be in ketosis for too long. So you should cycle through. Right. 
And what is this? Uh, see, I see spiritual voodoo witchcraft spelled negative intent. Yeah, that's beyond my pay grade, but there are uh, people who are experts in dealing with those issues. Okay. Now, that could be from a hospital procedure. It could be from a curse from an old girlfriend or um, a family miasm, right, that persists throughout the, the generations. Um, Interesting. Again, it's way beyond my pay grade. I'm, I'm into 3D, things that I can touch and move. Okay, there's dehydration. Now, I'm... I'm pretty uh, intuitive after working with athletes for 30 years. Yeah. It's obvious that you're an athlete and that you're, that you're drinking enough water. The reason for the dehydration is because of the electrolyte. The issue. sodium, yeah. Right. Because what happens is water that has electrolytes becomes sticky, if you will, and wants to stay. Water that is um, in an electrolyte depleted situation just kind of flushes through the body and, and it, isn't it, utilized by the tissues properly. And can be harmful, right? Because then you flush more minerals out if it's not right. absorbing. Um, this is supposed to be gastric, by the way. So, okay, because you do have an ulcer, you have the ulcer bacterium, the H. pylori. Hmm. And then, um, let's see what it says about cardiac asthma here. That doesn't sound too good. Well, it's in purple, which mm -hmm. means it's potentially transitory. It's not chronic. Okay, good. Okay. And then you only have one. And if it's uh, okay, you have PKU. Interesting. Um, okay. This is uh, fetal ketoneurics who have trouble absorbing the uh, amino acid um, phenylalanine. So this can be created, unfortunately, by NutraSweet or aspartame. Yeah, I don't, and I'm sure that you don't, but right. it might have might be sneaking into your life through gum or drinks or some type of powder, right? Or maybe in the past and your body's still dealing with the uh, maybe effects that's of the NutraSweet. Yeah. Huh. This Here's is, traumatic shock. This is probably some of the head trauma. Yeah. For therapy for head trauma, would you, is it PEMF or? The PEMF is always going to be choice number one, followed by um, light therapy. Um, and. There's no substitute for um, corrective work, whether it's craniosacral or rolfing or someone who's um, well versed in those things. And that, like the healthiest people you see, do they have like a very small list of things? Or well, everyone's going to have the same length of list. Oh, I see. Okay, but some people come up with this whole page being clear, for example, clear circle rather than having the colors. Okay, so we don't get too concerned about those. Okay, here's the Royal Rife page. And these would be frequencies then? Yeah, so this is priceless for folks with a Rife device. The reason being that the biggest weakness in Rife was uh, diagnostics. Yeah. Um, Which is what he had the microscope for, right? Right, but who has uh, a microscope and who's going to take the time to draw their blood? And yeah. Remember that as the, mic as the magnification changes, you're getting into whole different pathologies, right? So if you're looking at viruses, which are tiny, Mm -hmm. You're going to miss the bacterium, which are large, and so you may completely miss the frequency that you need. This really, is much more elegant. His was uh, really unique too, wasn't it, that they haven't been able to duplicate his? Right. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, a friend of mine has uh, access to the original Rife equipment. So it's, been, um, it's being taken care of now and actually utilized. Oh, speak, awesome. So that's wow. pretty exciting. Okay, let's look at another Rife page. Yeah, you definitely have a gut infection. And the turpentine and the the silver or the nanoxide would take care of the gut infection? Those would be the two best choices that I can think of. Okay, there's fluoride. We need to get that out of your life, too. It's affecting the thyroid. And the yeah, I don't use animals. fluoride uh, toothpaste. I don't use it. Right, but uh, it's your showering in it. And, uh, I have a filter, though. But, oh, yeah, I guess it doesn't... Uh, shower filters don't take care of the fluoride, do they? Just the chlorine? N no one that I know um, takes out the fluoride with a shower filter. Okay. Let's look at uh, new medicine. This is Dr. Hammer's page. Dr. H-A-M-E-R from Germany. Now, this has to do with how the brain is processing insults to the rest of the body. Okay, interesting. So, number one, this is from your training to strengthen the musculature for further strain. So your brain is um, comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But look at number two. I believe that you may have had some damage during a concussion to the portion of the brain that has to do with um, dealing with water. 
Okay. All right. Interesting. Intracellular versus extracellular, how much to hold on to versus how much to eliminate, right? This is actually a, a fascinating study to go into his work. And he spent time in jail for it, so we know that he was <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> the more progressive they are, then. Exactly. Okay, let's look at some solutions here. Here's a homeopathic page. Huh. So, again, you don't have to focus on all of them, maybe the top three or four or five. And the squares and the circles, what does that mean? Uh, that has to do with subconscious versus conscious. And so typically when you, your patients, you would suggest to do these homeopathics for just by one bottle's worth or how, how much would you have to take this stuff? Well, what we would do is maybe focus on the chronic issues in the brown and the purple or the intense issues, I should say. Okay. And then uh, retest in a month or six weeks and see what comes up. And you see a lot of them will clear up in a month or... Oh, yeah. Um, as long as there's other uh, aspects being dealt with as well, like the nutrition and um, some of the detox. Okay, so let's look at, uh, here's a psychology page. This is uh, planetary healing. A blocking belief. Huh? So you're benevolent. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> and fuming. At the same time. And you like the sound of om... Yeah, that's true. So we know that everything has an emotional causality. Just like everything going on on the planet has a spiritual causality. Right. right. Everybody wants to talk about what's happening in 3D, and certainly that's important for us, but to, uh, to be able to look at what the real true root causes are, rather than the branches on the tree, but the roots of the tree. And it always starts energetically first, right? Right. Yeah. And what I found in 30 years of practice is the, the trauma resolution and emotional resolution are really number one. And what do you recommend? EFT or Rolfing? Or? Uh, EFT is fine if you're at home and you want to save some money, but it can be cumbersome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the most powerful therapies are the ones that utilize uh, discussion along with something somatic so the body is being touched whether it's acupuncture whether it's pool therapy whether it's toning with chakra bowls or uh, forks yeah. tuning forks mm -hmm. right and someone who's got a real heart um, particularly uh, I find females um, for males yeah for therapy someone older someone more um, nurturing um, very powerful things can happen and people can overcome some of these traumas in one session. And the devices are fantastic, but there's no substitute for discussing it with someone and having them touch you in a nurturing way. So cranial sacral would be probably a great... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite that works for me is the pool. Oh. Uh, a, a warm pool while you're in water and you're actually doing the psychotherapy while you're being watsued, if you will. Oh. Right. So you just float and they kind of hold you mm -hmm. and oh, okay. People like David Sawyer and Boulder and uh, AnnieBrook.com, people like that. And right. that that Very therapy powerful. is called pooling. Uh, pooling. Well, it's somatic water therapy. There's also a woman in think. Boulder named Sylvia. I can't recall her last name right now, but she uses tone, uh, tuning forks and uh, gongs and chakra bowls for a very profound trauma resolution experience while she's actually working on your body. Wow. Um, really neat stuff. Um, and, you know, it's all about, which if you're baking the perfect uh, cake, it's a whole bunch of ingredients. You leave one out and the cake is ruined. So yeah, we need to, the beauty of New Vision is that it allows us to leave no stone unturned. You know, it may be six months or a year before people get it and they come back to me and they go, well, what was that homeopathic again? And they start <laughs> taking it and boom, they get better, right? The one piece that they left out yeah. So it's a journey, and that we, we can't expect everyone to make instantaneous changes in every area. But what I tell people is, let's just choose one or two a week that you're going to tackle. Whether it's the purchase of supplements, or the visiting of a practitioner, 
or the purchase of a device that's going to help change things. Um, it's all about voltage, as we talked about. We've been taught that everything is a chemistry problem. That's only partially true. It actually begins with the voltage. So as we raise the voltage, many of these problems begin to fall away. It's amazing what I see with world-class athletes, for example, who can just continue to perform through the most heinous types of infections and adrenal weaknesses and things like that. The, the body is very resilient, and when people have a will, um, they can overcome a lot. Right. But at a certain point, the will loses to the pathology or to the heavy metal, and so ultimately needs to be dealt with. So the psychology can't override the physiology for too long? Right. <laughs> as much as we'd like to. Although I do believe in what I'm seeing is that because of all the toxicity that we're dealing with, I think that the human DNA is so malleable and so profoundly um, geared towards survival that it's actually modifying itself to deal with the modern filthy environment, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, evolving in a way. However, there are certain things that you're never going to overcome, like fluoride or cadmium. The willpower loses to the reality of the physiology at some point. But we know what to do when we have safe uh, detox methods now. Yeah, fortunately. And the number one for, you were saying for cadmium, probably... Uh, well, it would be a cocktail. Of so, uh, super sulfur. Okay, yeah. Uh, the glutathione that we talked about, uh, bentonite clay, and we would try those first, but if those didn't do the job, we would get into EDTA with heavy-duty chelation therapy. And the, the dent or the uh, concern with EDTA, there's something... Well, it messes with your electrolytes, which oh, okay. you're already having a problem with. So that wouldn't be a so, good first choice? No. I think long-term, you'd probably be all right with what we're talking about. Okay. Um, but uh, let's give it a try and we'll retest in six weeks or so. The good news is we can do it on the telephone. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and remember what happens with the heavy metals, right? The body forms a fat pocket around the heavy metal to protect the body from having to deal with the toxicity of that metal. Right. So it's not like the cadmium is affecting your IQ, obviously, or your your focus, um, your ability to form words and thoughts and to be motivated, right? Yeah. However, when you're on a long bike ride and you're using some of those fat stores, guess what? Some of that cadmium gets, gets released, released and uh, boop, guess where it goes? It goes right to where you had the head trauma because any place where we've had a physical trauma becomes a protonically charged entity, Huh? right? Where the body wants to be negatively charged. So anytime we have a protonically charged area it becomes like velcro or glue to every miserable thing that we put into our body it goes right there it's like magnetic huh right hmm. um, yeah here's an example. now it's functional see how uh, i do have an injury uh, here this and is more so I'm a bad boy eating something i'm allergic to like i'm gluten intolerant but i love my cheeseburger every now and then guess what the knee starts to hurt it doesn't go to the left knee because this is negatively charged this one has plus charges on it this is what arthritis is. People want to blame the injury, but it's not just the injury. It's the injury plus the combination of the gut. Um, leaky gut syndrome, for example, leading to those molecules actually ending up in these areas of injury, creating calcium, creating inflammation, and next thing you know, the joint is either locked solid or too inflamed to function, and now you're looking at replacement when we could actually have healed it um, energetically in the first place, potentially. Yeah, it's, it, this is so great that you can actually, you know, get it in advance before everything starts manifesting. So in a perfect world, I would combine um, what we're doing here with uh, thermal imaging, which is where we're headed, just so you can see, right? Yeah. Imagine if you could see your head and your, your thyroid and say, oh, wow, interesting, okay. And then we retest and we see the change in color as opposed to all of this left brain, um, you know, Dr. Spock kind of thing. Yeah, right, yeah.
So this is the uh, Pulse Harmonics PEMF device. That is the first one of its type to be this powerful. It's about 1500 Gauss uh, and it is DC and solid state, very safe. Designed, paid for and built here in Boulder, Colorado on the front range. So we're pretty proud of it. Um, so what we're doing with Scott is um, we'll nurture the adrenals there for a little while and then we'll go to the head and then we'll do another HRV and you can see the positive change. I can feel that in what I feel is my kidneys. Um, is that where I should feel it? Yep. Pulsing? So uh, intensities are very important. The reason I turned it all the way up is I just want you to feel the sensation and I want you to notice where the um, awareness is. Can you actually point to that spot? Yeah, I feel it. Like oh. a bell ringing. Both sides and then now this one just drops down to here too, so it's okay. mostly on the left side, but I feel it on the right too. So maybe multifidus and quadratus lumborum in the low back involved as well. So now that you've felt that, let's go ahead and turn it down a bit. It's actually counterproductive to blast away at the adrenal glands. I can imagine, yeah. Case, right? The general rule is that we want to stimulate musculoskeletal issues and we want to, want to uh, resonate with organ and brain because the water content of the tissue determines um, how the PEMF is going to be effective. So in other words, if we're dealing with a bone issue, it's going to be possibly different settings than if we're dealing with a liver or a brain. That makes sense. Yeah. Also, if we're trying to regenerate cartilage in the knee, for example, it's going to require typically higher intensities than dealing with an adrenal issue, which we just want to nurture and harmonize with. And the cool thing is we can prove the efficacy with uh, the HRV. I like objective testing. I think in 2016, with all the technology we have, we shouldn't be guessing when it comes to medical issues. Yeah, you'd think we'd have enough devices to, to verify it, right? How's that level? Uh, this feels good, yeah. It's, before it felt like my uh, kidneys were getting squeezed or something. But, right. Uh, I wasn't feeling it much. Should I be feeling it through the spine? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. Wherever you're feeling it, that's the area of low voltage. So that's what you want to make a mental note of and say, ah, oh, there it is. Okay. It's not over here, it's here, right? Because the device does have a bit of a diagnostic component to it through the back door. In other words, if I put it on my head and crank it all the way up and don't feel any headachey issues, then I'm probably okay. But for you, we know that we're going to find that spot and go, ooh, there it is. Right? Yeah. Because that area is literally soaking up the voltage from the device and raising its voltage. So what we're doing is we're taking that cell membrane, imagine it like a physio ball, an exercise ball. That cell is trying to get the trash out and it's trying to get nutrients in. But if we have a storm door there, that's going to be difficult. What the PEMF device does is it turns that storm door into a screen door and allows the waste products to, to leave and allows the nutrients to come in at about a 50% more efficient rate at the time that we're being. Um, so it's increasing the perme permeability. And right. Okay. So all those Krebs cycle processes are basically doubling in speed. Wow. Which also means that any supplements or any prescriptions that we're taking are going to be enhanced. So this is an important caveat for people who have lifestyle challenges. If you are a heavy coffee drinker or a heavy alcohol user or street drugs that are not positive, you're just going to add to the misery with the PEMF device. So that's an important for people to know um, that it's important to clean up, clean house before we uh, attempt to use the device. <laughs> Yeah, I can't even feel it now through my arms too, but it's a kind of a, it's a little slight tingle. I see on the box it says uh, certified space technology. What does that mean? Uh, we were invited to the space symposium, which is a 
very highbrow deal um, because NASA has been testing PEMF for decades. It's part of their armamentarium against uh, health issues because pharmaceuticals don't have a good track record in space. They need a gravity environment to work. Oh, interesting. Um, and also, it's impractical to take a pharmacy up there. Yeah. So, light and PEMF therapy are their two favorites, and um, we were able to get that uh, that stamp of approval from them, from Jack's relationship with NASA. And is is that what they use for? Um, I know there's a there was a problem with bone degeneration because they weren't getting that impact from the gravity, right? Is that does this help with that as well? Uh, in Europe, uh, PEMF is considered one of the two best osteoporotic treatments, oh, along okay. with whole body vibration therapy. Wow. So, but the for the nervous system, the the response or the um, the response of the body is almost immediate with with this because you're going to be able to test me and show. Yeah, we'll we'll most likely see a positive shift in your adrenal glands. Wow. But as far as like joints and osteo. Problems. Well, those things take longer. Yeah. However, sense. we we typically do see um, very positive changes from one treatment in terms of 20, 30, 80 percent reduction in pain, increase in range of motion. Right. Well, there's really nothing that PEMF doesn't positively enhance. If we could take our body apart mm -hmm. and look at it like the back of a Swiss watch, an old Swiss watch that was mechanical. You'd see that some gears are going very slow because they're big, and then there's other little gears that are going medium, and then there's other tiny ones that are whirring around, right? Yeah. That's indicative of not only the chakra system, but also the organs. Okay. So the liver is super fast, just turning over all the time because of all the blood flow. Right. Right. But then you look at cartilage, very slow then and big, slow. right? So... We need to take all that into account when we're attempting to uh, to make the make the shifts in the body appropriately. So ideally, the body should have multiple uh, frequencies going on too, right? Rather than, um, I mean, I've heard some people say that we should be more um, in tune with the Schumann resonance of the plant, which is about seven point eight three hertz. Um, so those devices that are emitting that seven point eight three hertz to get us more in touch with our natural. Uh, electrical flow or energetic flow. It, it, um, what do you think of that? Is it well? That's what PEMF is attempting to do. It's just bring everything to artificially recreate that pulse. Mm. Not that every one of these pulses is seven point eight four, but yeah, it's seven to fifteen. And there is evidence that the Schumann wave is changing. So yeah, it does it, it fluctuates? Is it well? It's rising. Is that artificially in a bad way, or is that naturally? Uh, hard to say. Yeah. I've heard both. Um, I wouldn't doubt it if it was being artificially messed with, but Greg Braden um, says that you know, based on what his studies of cultures, ancient cultures and native cultures say, that that that's supposed to happen is predictive to that the Earth will raise its frequency and its consciousness level or whatever you want to call it. Where, but then other people say that the reason it's showing up kind of erratic and not at the normal seven point eight three or seven point eight four. That uh, it's because of all the artificial frequency being inundated. I'm sure that that's part of it. Probably the best person to seek the answers on that is uh, Dan Winter. Yeah, that guy's. But he's hard to follow. <laughs> Man, he's <laughs> he's out there. Um, I think that um, Patrick Flanagan would probably have some good things to say about that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, even Dr. Pollock. Okay, let's move this to the head now. Okay, so. What I want you to do, we're going to turn it up all the way. And then I want you to just slowly move it to different portions of the head. And I want you to tell me where it hurts the most. I can feel it mostly in my eye and my eyelid, the right side. Okay. So let's make a note of that. Let's go up to the top now. And remember that the device is trying to speak to your body and tell you what you need to focus on. So if you're having any uh, bell ringing, any uh, inflammation being made known to you through the tactile response, then we know that that's the area where we need to focus. 
Okay, let's try the back. Anything going on? on the it, it was more down through the back of my ear, kind of down the neck a little bit. And so the back of the head? Yep. With the head in the center. This, there's an Archimedes spiral in that map that has a very specific shape as it comes off of the wire. You sensing anything? Yeah, it's a pulsing like right here and then in behind the eyes and through the eyes. Okay, let's try the left side of the head. Oh. Well, that one I definitely feel like okay. that. So we've, we've hit pay dirt. This is what the Russians call the bullseye when they're talking about energy medicine. Huh. So now the important thing is to not blast away at your head. This isn't cartilage regrowth in the knee, right? So yeah. We want to just gently move it toward a higher voltage state. Are you still feeling the pain at that intensity level? No. Huh? Okay. It was it like up inside the nasal cavity, up in the mm -hmm. left side? I could feel it like, like hammering. This, uh, this is pretty subtle. I don't feel it. Right? You don't feel it? A little bit in the ear, but not too much. Okay. Now, are all these the um, Pulse A2000? Are there different devices here? Well, there's one device, but three different attachments. I see. So we've got this, this pad, and then we've we got the mat, and then we have a coil, and then we have a fanny pack pouch. Oh. And that's for low back? Uh, low back, thigh, okay. abdomen. So for the head, um, the mat would be appropriate, but also the uh, the coil, so that would concentrate the energy a little bit more. And would you want to turn it down if you did the, if you use the coil? For sure. Let's spend a couple more minutes on the back side, and then we'll uh, do another HRV. Do you know Roland and those guys from uh, Heart Math Institute? Then I do. Roland McCrady. Yeah. They're doing some great work. Yeah, they definitely have kind of proven to the skeptics that this stuff works. And the whole idea that the, you know, through their research, I think it was their research, wasn't it? They showed that the, the heart, for example, emits more of an electromagnetic field than the brain does. Oh, dramatically. Yeah. It's uh, over eight feet. And, so, and, and the, isn't that where they figured out the, that the heart sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart? So well, the brain is basically a Rolodex for information storage, whereas the heart is uh, has wisdom. Yeah, it's it's knowledge, gnosis, right? Where the brain is just what's uh, Stan's phone number again? Yeah, right. We've we've given much too much credence to the brain in Western culture and forgotten the heart. Yeah, and the fact that there's a combination there, right? And what they call with uh, coherence, right? The coherence that... Well, the brain and the heart definitely resonate with the Schumann wave. Okay. And the Schumann resonance, that's a critical aspect of health that we're attempting to recreate with this device. So, here's what we have. Let's look at adrenal first. You were 0.72. And 0.53 to 0.69 is in the normal range. You can see the added activity from the PEMF here and the height and the thickness of the blue. Yeah. And then look at this. You were a 10.4, now you're a 7.4. Wow. That's a, and each one of those movements is exponential. It's not one. Wow. So that's huge. So that yeah. did make a difference. Okay. You were 69 and 72, now you're 61, 67. Okay, remember you were minus two in the degeneration zone here? Yeah. Now you're zero when you're upright, which is neutral. Still minus one when you're laying down, which is anomalous, but at least you're headed in the right direction, which is toward the regeneration. And then look at that. Wow, that's a big difference. <laughs> look at all this activity now, and then look at all of the adrenal activity in the back, right? Because this is laying down, this is standing. Yeah. Remember how erratic it was before? See how nice and big that is? Right. Wow. Full. So imagine um, weeks of the right adrenal supplements, um, the right brain supplements, and the PEMF device consistently applied, and you can see that the body will begin to hold that new charge because it wants to. Wow. Just like if you cut your finger and keep it clean, it heals. 
PEMF is not healing anything. It's only assisting the body. To do what it's designed to. Design so. Yeah, that makes sense. Cold laser therapy um, also has tremendous applications. And the reason being, PEMF is low frequency and cold laser therapy is high frequency. So for cuts, wounds, burns, sinus congestion, headaches, sprains and strains, uh, the laser is a tremendous tool and it is a bit more portable. Uh, actually, can we try that on my foot? Sure. <laughs> Do I need it to, to be bare or can it just go through the skin or through the sock? Uh, where's the problem? It's right there. So laser therapy um, being predominantly an ATP generator in that area. Also increase in blood flow, lymphatic drainage. All very positive. So it differs from a normal laser how then? So there's, well, there's normal no light is very diffuse. Yeah. If you could see the laser beams that are in here or the laser diode, every single photon that's coming out is going the exact same power, same amplitude, same waveform and same frequency. That's not the case with the diffuse light. Okay. Um, and uh, some lasers are have the heat. Um, right. This one does not. This one's five milliwatts. Is it? And that what's that's what makes it cold lasers. That is a low wattage. Right. Okay. Um, but even some of the newer lasers, up to fifteen watts, can still be considered cold because they pulse them so quickly that there is no tissue heating. Oh, interesting. And the one that we're using on your foot is about four thousand dollars, and and um, is is not the top of the food chain anymore. Oh well. Wow. Um, what's that one called? This one's called the Q1000. It's a tremendous device, but um, I would recommend for that kind of money, if one, one wanted to get into a clinical device, um, Dr. Steve Schwartz's uh, ASABalance.com. Um, it's called the LZR7. Okay. It's a wonderful little handheld with about 250 modes. Oh, wow. Um, and it's 500 milliwatts. Actually, our chief technical officer here at Pulse Harmonics... Um, has been uh, battling with a skin issue and uh, using the PEMF and the LZR7 from Dr. Schwartz and the nanoxide, he's uh, almost 100%. Wow. It's no surgery, no pharmaceuticals. That's fantastic. It's a great testimonial. So it regenerates skin too then? Mm -hmm. Well, Now, just my personal experience, mm -hmm. the combination of... PEMF and laser is really powerful, or any type of light therapy. If I had to pick one, I would go with the PEMF, um, just because it's so foundational. Yeah. It's a lot easier to recreate light situations by getting outside, or what have you, but it's almost impossible to recreate that PEMF field because of our artificial environment. And those uh, little small devices like like the zappers and whatnot you see are not as effective you'd have well to. they're they're great but you you do get what you pay for typically um unlike with pulse harmonics which is a great deal because you're basically getting a twenty thousand dollar device for thirty three hundred dollars right that's a significant <laughs> price drop you're also covering a lot of bases where you can actually it actually supplants many of the lesser priced mats <coughs> excuse um because there's probably a dozen manufacturers who make low-powered PEMF mats, which do have value, but they don't have much flexibility because they're only low power. Right. They're not going to regenerate knee tissue, uh, knee cartilage. They're not, they don't have that robustness to, um, to get deeper into the body with any type of power. Yeah, I would think with, especially with joint issues, then that would be important. So we're sharing uh, Uncle Charlie's Ranch water. Uh, this is at UncleCharlie'sRanch.com. Most likely the cleanest water supply ever tested. Also the highest oxygen level and the highest Langer angle ever tested. Um, there's more explanation on the website, but uh, great story. We were at Charlie's and we 
purchased a number of bottles and put them in a cardboard box in the back of an SUV and then we went for a snowshoe for a few hours and came back and uh, we said, what's that smell? And we looked and the sun had reflected through the bottle and burned a hole in the cardboard about that big, <laughs> burning a hole in the car seat. You could see the flames coming off the car seat and the smoldering. And uh, we said to Charlie, look at that. And he said, oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> you have to close the top of the lid on the cardboard box to keep the sun from creating a prismatic effect through the water and burning a hole in the uh, in whatever's around. That's pretty amazing, amazing uh, confirmation that that stuff is not normal water. And uh, the anecdotal stories are pretty profound of people overcoming um, many, many maladies. Um, and I've noticed as an athlete that my total water intake has dropped about half. You just don't need as much water because the hydration properties are so powerful and profound. And you don't really drink it like regular water. You think of it as medicine. So even though this is a gallon, this would last probably a week. And you can use it as an adjunct to other quality water supplies. But um, as my cousin Thornton Streeter says, if 80% of your body is water, then 80% of your health care should be water. So it needs to be a primary focus. Um, not very easy to obtain necessarily, but if people give me a call, 303-818-5203, um, I can direct you to uh, ways to get it as well, other than going to the website and driving up to Black Hawk. Have you um, ever tried Patrick Flanagan's product, the Mega Hydrate or the Crystal Energy? I have not, but De Patrick is definitely a respectable figure, and anything he's putting out, I'm sure, is top-notch. Yeah, it sounds similar to, to what his uh, product is supposed to do.